Awesome. So I'm going to start recording the lesson uh, so I can make you, I can start explaining the PowerPoint that uploaded today. Did you download it and read it? Good, okay. I hope you all found the material and gave it a read so it's easier for you to understand what I'm going to explain, yeah? All of you, when I start uh, sharing the screen, all of you have to turn off your mix and when I finish or when I tell you, you can turn it on and ask any question if you have it, okay? Okay, good. Parece que el único que me está escuchando es Vladi, me parece, eh? Okay, okay, I'm listening. Okay. Okay, bueno, bueno. Okay. Bueno. Okay. And I, I downloaded the, the PowerPoint. Good, good. Um, it's, there's no problem. I will, I'm going to share the screen as well. Uh, 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 mm, 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 mm. Yeah, the whole screen. Yeah, the whole screen. Okay, can you see what I'm seeing? Yes. My beautiful yes. PowerPoint. Yes. Okay, we're going to start today with the very first set of volophones and known as the easiest to recognize and to apply whenever we are transcribing. So this is illusion and assimilation. Let me have a sip of my mate. Ah, delicious. And I'm gonna start, okay. First of all, elision. Elision is basically the omission of sounds, either vowels or consonants, when the syllable containing the sound is weak, and that it's something that you must always remember, that in order to have elision, the syllable must be weak. What does it mean that the syllable must, it must be weak? that it cannot have any kind of a stress. Yeah, I hope you know what uh, weak syllable is, okay? We can define three kinds of elision, historical elision, word internal elision, and elision at word boundary. yeah? This phrase at word boundary, yeah, it's the same as saying at connective speech, yeah? When we connect two or more words or have um, a set of words together, yeah, that can be affected as well by elision, okay? So elision is the omission of sounds. It can be vowels and can be consonant as well, but not any vowels nor any consonant, yeah? Elision of vowels occur only within words, yeah? Elision of vowels cannot be made at word boundary or connected speech, yes? Only vowels, the only vowel stories that can be elided are the weak centralized one number two, A and 12. And for that, I have a set of, this is this, this. Okay, number 12 is vowel. It's the weak centralized one or the schwa. Yeah, is short central myth and neutral according to the lip position. The other was vowel number 
eight, yeah. And vowel number two, vowel number eight, where is it? Vowel number eight is short u, yeah, which is as well short week, of course. And the same for vowel number two, which is as well short and weak. Okay. Good. Let's go to that again. Then we have elision of consonants. Yeah, that can only be that can be possible at word boundary as well as um, within words. Okay. And the only two possible vowels that can be lighted, that can be omitted, omitted or elided, yeah, as here the uh, material says, are synonyms for explaining, yeah, the omission of sounds. So you can either say is omitted or is elided, okay? Good. So the only two sounds that can be elided or omitted are the voiceless and voiced alveolar plosive sounds. Okay, that's, regard, that's regarding which kind of sounds can be omitted. Okay, as I said before, we have three kinds of um, elision, historical elision, word internal elision, and elision at word vandry. Okay, elision, historical elision is so are those sounds that were omitted, sounds that were that existed in an earlier form of the word and are omitted um, in a later form. Okay, for example, we have first of all, let me. Let me go to you. Okay, can you please uh, activate your mix and tell me if so far you understanding what I'm saying? If I'm going, if I'm clear enough for you to understand? Or do you need me to go back to what illusion is? It's very clear to me. Who said that? I'm not, I'm not seeing who's speaking. I'm so sorry. Sebastian. Good. <clears throat> so far, are you understanding everything I said? You hear me clearly. You can see what I'm seeing. Everything that? Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay, very good. Very good. Awesome. Um, so, historical elisions are those songs that existed in an earlier form of a word and are omitted in a later form. That means that they were, they used to be pronounced, but somehow because of the plenty of language modifications that we have that you know that exist, those sounds were no longer pronounced. So that's why they got omitted, yeah? And because of that as well, you will um, may not find it in the citation form. That means the transcription that appears in on dictionaries. Yeah, you may not know. Um, you may not found it. Those sounds like they are. They used to be in the word. So that's why it's historical. Yeah, it has been omitted long time ago. For example, in this word, yeah. These um, examples were taken from Diana Finch book, of course. And this approximate sound that was omitted in the transcription of this word is because of the RP pronunciation, yeah? But in American English, it is pronounced, yeah? That's why you don't see it. It's horse in American English, and horse in RP pronunciation. The sound that is actually omitted, that has been actually omitted is 
the schwa at the end of the word. Okay, that's the sound that has disappeared regardless the pronunciation. Okay, good. The same for um, yeah, happens the same with um with the approximate sound, yeah, it was omitted. And for half, yeah, it doesn't matter if it's uh, RP pronunciation or American accent, the lateral alveolar sound here in the middle was never pronounced, yeah, at least in current uh, pronunciation as we know. The same for this word, no, yeah, the voiceless alveolar, voiceless, sorry, velar plosive sound was never pronounced. You don't uh, even would know how to pronounce it with the, the sound. The same for this one, yeah, the bilabial voiced, the voiced bilabial plosive sound as well, as the same for knee, the same for listen, and the same for wreck. Good. So this is historical elision. If you have to explain that in, for example, um, some task that we may have later, not not uh, in in a soon uh, prospect, or. Um, in the final exam, you will explain it as historical elision. And if I ask you what historical elision is, you can say what well, it says in this material sounds, which were uh, which uh, were used to pronounce and have been elided in the course of the years or in the course of history. Good. Then I'm going to move to contextual elision okay contextual elision means as the title says it's about elided sounds in the context yeah a sound which exists in a word set yeah a set of words by itself is dropped in connect speech yes Voiced and voiceless alveolar plosive sounds are generally elided when preceded and followed by another consonant. So for that, let me go to Correti. Here, okay, this is not, no, this one. Open, this one. Um, Voiceless and voiced alveolar plosive, you know which they are, but you have to explain it using these names, as I told you from the very first lesson that we have, okay? We have to get accustomed to naming sounds according to its feature, phonetic, place of articulation, and manner of articulation. That's why, and sorry, you didn't see anything. Okay. Voiced and voiceless alveolar plosive, as I said, are generally elided when preceded and followed by another consonant, especially when the following is a stop. And you know which uh, sounds are stops. We have a few exceptions here, okay? There is, however, a tendency to retain these two sounds, yeah, because it's an exception, as I said, before an initial glottal stop, okay? For example, guest house, yeah? Pay attention that it says a tendency, yeah? That doesn't mean that people cannot omit it. It's just a tendency and it's because according to the rules, yeah, rules from a phonetic and phonology book. Yeah, it doesn't reflect actually how people speak. Yeah, it's just a phonetic book. Okay, for example, guest house, sent home. Yeah, there are some examples. 
the voiceless alveolar plosive in these sequences, yeah, nasal followed by the voiceless alveolar plosive, the lateral alveolar voice uh, followed, sorry, by this same sound. For example, sent them, spoiled child, yeah, even though you may have heard me saying it, spoiled child is a spoiled child, which is very often realized as a glottal replacement and you don't have to care about that because we will later see it. And then we have finally the glottal sound is elided, of course, in unaccented, non-initial, the pronouns, yeah, the reflexive and the nominal pronouns, the verb have, yeah, conjugated, and sometimes the pronoun who. In the preceding word, if the preceding word, sorry, ends in an option, an approximant, yes, optional, yeah, you heard it. Either the glottal or the approximant must be elided. Yeah, for example, we have this phrase, Peter himself. You can say Peter himself, or you can say Peter himself. And you are going to see all those examples transcribed in this beautiful picture that I took of my transcription. So we have about contextual elision. Some examples, yeah. Last time, this is connective speech. This is word boundary. Why? Because we have two words connected, two words in a sequence, you may say, or in a text or sentence or something like that. That's contextual elision, that's connective speech, or you can also call it at word boundary. So in these two words, last time, the, voice, the final voiceless alveolar plosive sound in last was omitted. So you have last time, yes, last time. The same for these two words blind man, first day, last talk, cash them, send to, okay? Bien. Then we move to the exceptions that I says, okay? Remember, we have a tendency to retain these two sounds voiceless and voiced and alveolar plosive, yeah, and we have these two examples. Here's the transcription of that before the uh, glottal sounds, guest house, send home, okay? The second exception says that the glottal is elided in an accented uh, syllables and the pronouns, as I said, yes. And if the preceded, preceding word ends in the approximate, one of these two sounds was to be elided, as I said. So this is the transcription. Yeah, we retain the uh, voiceless sounds in these sequences. For example, sent them, spoiled, child and da. And the final, yeah, the, um, sorry, in the glottal stop could be um, omitted as in, instead of saying he, you can say e only if this pronoun has no stress, yeah, is unaccented completely. The same for this, is instead of he is, the same for herself, yeah? And the final example that uh, said if the preceding words ends in the approximate or the glottal or the um, 
either the global or the approximate must be elided, as I said before. So we have, as I told you, Peter himself or Peter himself. Yeah, that's the two options for pronouncing the same set of words. Good, good. You will see some changes. Yeah, I may see that you may have noticed some changes uh, regarding some sounds. For example, and when I finish explaining this, I would like you to turn on your mix and tell me if you have seen them before. Okay, yeah, this sound, yeah, it, which is vowel number three, yeah, is no longer used in that way. For example, let me see where it is. Okay, like this, or like we use it in uh, diphthongs. Yeah, the, the, the sound that you already know that you learned last year have changed, has changed into this sound. Yeah, it's like a number three and it's called epsilon. And later I will explain that to you. So we no longer use vowel number three as you already know. Yeah, which is the same letter uh, as E. Yeah, but we will use this one and there will be no confusion. <clears throat> the same for the approximant, yeah, it has changed into this one that you are seeing here. And you will later tell me if you have already seen them. Okay, you can turn on, turn on your mix again and tell me if you have any doubts to tell me that this is a mess, that you you not understand anything, um, all, all that. I'm listening to you. Somebody? Is Can anybody there? Can you explain the exceptions another time, please? Oh, sorry, I, I couldn't get what you said. If, can you explain exceptions other time, please? Again, exceptions. This one? Conceptual. Yeah, the examples. The examples, okay. Examples of exceptions. Yeah, I didn't understand that part. Okay. Um, the exceptions, yeah, is for like the rule says that contextual elision is mainly for consonants, okay? And the exception is that are of two kinds, yes? Either we retain the sounds that the rule says we should elize or we can elide another consonant, which is not part of the rule. That's why it's an exception, yeah? Two kinds of exceptions. One, retaining what should be elided, and the other is retaining a different sound that the rule says, yeah? The rule says voiceless and voiced alveolar plosive, which are these two sounds. Yeah, and the exception is that we can elize this one, which is the glottal stop. Okay, so when we retain the voiceless and voiced alveolar plosive is because it's followed by a word that starts the sound, not the spelling, yeah, this is allophonic transcription, we focus on sounds. Yeah, the same for phonetic transcription. We focus on how words, words sound instead of the spelling of the word. That's so important to, to, to have in mind whenever you are transcribing. Yeah, don't pay much attention to the spelling of the word, but to the, um, to how they sound, 
Okay, so if the following word starts starts with a glottal sound, like in guest house, yes, we retain the voiceless alveolar plosive sound. Okay, why why is it that it happens? Because this is the S sound is voiceless and is alveolar and is like sibilant. Yeah, it makes a sound. So that means that there's no interrupt, um, interruption in the articulation articulators, articulators, and it just the the air is released freely. And the following sound, this one, yeah, the glottal sound as well has no obstruction in the flow of air to come out of, 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 the, of the mouth. So that's why we need something that makes a stop, yeah, that cuts the release of air, yeah, that interrupts the release of hair of, of hair sorry so we have guest house that's why we need it and that's just an exception and and it's not for for a lot of words just uh, some few words may have that uh, exception applies yeah the same for sent home okay yeah okay thanks it's very clear now okay the same for sent home because uh, the nasal sound it's an alveolar nasal yeah mm, there's no obstruction again for the air to come out and again the glottal is as well as i said before as i said in house no obstruction so we need something that makes it a like a cut send home d d home okay and the same happened for retaining the the same sound voiceless alveolar plosive whenever the sequence is followed uh, preceded sorry by a, an alveolar nasal like here or the alveolar lateral like this one the same happens um, and the other exception was retaining a a sound that is not part of the rule, which is the glottal sound, and it can be only when the um, like those uh, pronouns, yeah, reflexes, um, personal pronoun, are in unstressed position or unstressed uh, syllable. So instead of saying he, you say he is herself. And there you have two, sorry, 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 where me refui? No, a ver, sí. Um, and you have two kind of pronunciation for the same set of words. Peter himself, Peter himself, or you can say Peter himself. Okay? Anybody else has another question or can tell me Please, can you start all over again because I didn't get anything on that you said? Voy a dejar de compartir. A ver si somebody is listening to me. Carla, te pregunto. Mm -hmm. Ah, ¿dónde dejo de compartir? ¿Por qué en historical? Venga, venga, un segundo, un segundo, un segundo. No, no quiero. Quiero dejar de compartir. ¿Era este? ¿O era este? De tener compartición, hacer la compartición. Ajá. ¿Quién me había preguntado algo? No, yo le pregunto. Eh, ¿Por qué en Historical Edition eh, se omite, por así decirlo, eh, otras consonantes como la R o la K? Esas son porque son palabras que ya están adaptadas así, digamos, eso no entendí. Exactamente, exactamente. Eso fue porque 
fue cambiando a través del tiempo, porque también depende mucho, como lo vimos en lingüística, ¿no? Cuál sea la proveniencia del, eh, de la cultura que conquistó a ese lugar donde se habló y donde se pronunciaban esas palabras, esos términos, entonces se ha tenido como una tendencia más a omitir esos sonidos para que se parezca más al lenguaje de origen. ¿Sí? Ponele que venía de, eh, no sé, eh, qué sé yo, de los vikingos, no sé, no sé, me sale. Eh, entonces se omitían diferentes tipos de sonidos, y la, pala y la palabra ya quedó así. Pero son palabras que quedan así, no hay ninguna regla, digamos, para eso, ¿no? No, o sea, son no. Palabras... pero por ejemplo, a ver... Ok. Todo, por eso es algo, a ver chicos, esto es, es mucho, muy importante. Y yo creo que ya les he dicho hasta el cansancio, voy a poner así tipo play y over and over and over again, decir lo mismo. Si ustedes no se aprenden de memoria los, con, las consonantes, sobre todo con respecto al lugar de articulación, se les va a complicar bastante los alofones. ¿Por qué? Porque todos los alephones tienen su explicación en un 80% en el lugar de articulación. Y en el otro 20% en, el, en la forma de articulación, o sea, manner of articulation. Entonces, por ejemplo, como les mostré al principio, la palabra have, ¿sí? o no, yeah, the verb no, en la palabra, ¿sí? vos tendrías, vieron que se escribe K-N-O-W, ¿sí? lo voy a explicar en castellano como para que después puedan ir ustedes practicando este mismo razonamiento. La palabra comienza con una K y después tenés una N, o sea, comienza con un Vilar, plosive sound, y si es un plosive sound, hace algún tipo de explosión antes de largar el aire. ¿Sí? Entonces, seguido de un nasal sound que no tiene ningún tipo de obstrucción. Entonces, es, digamos, incómodo, no imposible, pero es incómodo pronunciar kno. I have to kno. I have to know. Do you talk like that? Is it easy for you to, to pronounce know? No. Good. The same for me. <clears throat> it sounds very awkward to say kni, kni, or to say listen. Yeah, if you say listen, Um, you don't sound like trying to achieve the target pronunciation. And the same for grek. Okay, I, I cannot even say it. Grek. O sea, o sea, más difícil que pronunciar Shrek. Es re difícil. That's why. Esa sería más o menos la, la explicación, Juli. O sea, como para hacerte lo sintético. Ajá. Ya, ya voy, ya voy. Para hacértelo sintético es por eh, economía de sonidos, ¿sí? Que es lo que todos siempre hacemos. Sí. Ese es el propósito general de los halophones, la economía de sonidos en una forma u otra. ¿Qué logra la economía de sonidos? Que vos hables más fluido, más fluido y más natural. Okay. O sea, ese es el, 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 digamos, el génesis de todo. ¿Se, ac Ajá, se aclaró okay. más o menos, Juli? Sí, sí. Good. ¿Quién más iba? ¿Quién, ¿Quién apareció? ¿Quién dijo? ¿Carla? Yo. Ok. Hola. Hola, Sime. Eh, hola. Ok. <coughs> eh, yo quería dar una, una información nomás. Uh -huh. eh, Ay, otra vez te cuento, me, me voy a apretar los lo auriculares. Eh. Que en el Diana Finch 
creo que es la página 51, no sé de los libros, pero hay una parte que dice de Ingrid Fontenon, uh -huh. está súper complicado de lo de los A ver, acá tengo next to me, porque yo prácticamente duermo con el Diana Finch a la mano. Eh, 51, Yusef. Sí. No, este no, este no es. Este. Let me see. A partir de ahí, digamos, que tienes el bloque que tocas el 7, ya no te tenés tanto. Uh -huh. Claro. Lo, ¿cómo, se, ¿Cómo se las pronuncia bien en los lugares como lo que explicabas recién sobre lo de la lengua? Uh -huh. que, que quedaría incómodo pronunciar. Exacto. Exacto. Y miro. Muy bien, muchas gracias, la verdad. Sí, lo voy a leer y de última eh, edito. Voy a editar el, el Power con, con, con esto que me decís. Muchas, 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 muchas gracias. So badly. Good. Bien. Hasta acá, ¿nadie más tiene algún tipo de duda? De lo que sea. Bien, bien. El resto. Aníbal, ¿any doubts? No. Yeah, okay. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, I'm just listening and learning a lot. But it was okay. very clear to me. If you want... Um, Yeah, hello everyone to please to make your acquaintance um yeah if you want me to say something about um what you were saying is um in in german and in other languages they pronounce the ga before the n but like you said you know it was delighted in english because uh like you said sometimes it sounds a little bit tricky to pronounce like knee instead of just knee or All the other the other um, examples you mentioned. Yeah. yeah. Yes, as Vladimir um, says, knight yeah. or knife and all that combination of of consonants. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And in the past, yes, they used to pronounce um the R in in Britain. Mm -hmm. Like arm. They used to say arm. And this is why in America they pronounce arm, because it belongs to an older kind of English. The one spoken in America, exactly. and the one in England, yeah, yeah, it evolutioned in a way that they stopped pronouncing the R's, and the same thing in the the other, the the other and Anglo-Saxon or Germanic languages, like German or Norwegian. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Early in modern early. English. Yeah. 